welcome to the Uncommon Career Podcast, helping you tap into your God-given identity so that you can get confident, get hired, and boost your income. Subscribe for career motivation and God stories, for practical job search and career advancement strategies, and for biblical truths to help you thrive at work and make an impact. Hey friend, welcome back. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about something that tends to be controversial in the career space, and that's the cover letter. I'm sure that you've heard from YouTube videos or from folks online or career influencers that you do not need a cover letter because no one ever reads it. Now, do you really think that's true? Because I sure don't. Yeah, there might be a time where some folks and some hiring managers or recruiters don't read your cover letter, but in all honesty, there's a reason for that. In today's episode, I'm going to go over why folks don't read cover letters, why folks do read cover letters, and why it is in your best interest to make sure that you craft a good cover letter and that you absolutely send it in. All right, so let's get started with today's episode. I've got a lot to share. You wouldn't think there'd be so much to go over when it comes to cover letters, but there actually is. To write a good cover letter, to make a good impression, and to land that interview. And of course, I gotta stop right here and remind you that the resume and the cover letter on their own are not typically what gets you the many, many interviews. What gets you the many interviews and what brings you momentum is the connection, the networks that you have, the informational interviews that you conduct, just getting the ball rolling. And of course, having your brand set aside and figured out and clear. Um, But the cover letter is a great assist. So let's talk about it. First, let's talk about the situation at hand. Like everyone says, you don't need a cover letter and no one ever reads them. Well, here's a couple of reasons why you do need a cover letter. First, I've been in multiple situations where they will put on their uh, application that a cover letter is optional. And oftentimes what that means is we are going to easily sift out half of the folks who are going to do the minimum because that tells us that they're going to do the minimum at their work as well. So if it's optional and you're trying to be competitive, it really means required. That's one thing. The second thing to remember about cover letters is that there is a reason why so many managers say that they don't read cover letters. A lot of times When you read a cover letter, it is boring. Like you literally see the cover letter and it says something like, hey, Mr. Whatever the name is. And then it says, I came across your position in such and such source, and I'm excited to apply. As a candidate for a blah, blah, blah degree, I am a perfect fit. And to be honest, yes, that's professional, but no, it doesn't really say anything. That statement, that little paragraph that everyone starts their cover letter with is very generic. And when a employer or a recruiter or a manager reads this, they are automatically going to just go to sleep. Their mind is going to snooze. And this is why cover letters don't get read. But here's what it should have. In the very first sentence, you have to craft that sentence to compel the reader to read the second sentence. That is the only purpose of the first sentence of your cover letter. No other purpose. First sentence gets the reader to read the second sentence. Guess what the purpose is for the second sentence? It gets the reader to read the third sentence. Same thing for the third sentence, right? So you're basically creating this flow. Think of yourself as sort of a filmmaker where if I'm not, if my attention isn't captured in the first 30 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, I'm not going to watch the rest of the movie. And that's what you have to do with your cover letter as well. Now, that's just getting to, you know, making sure that the employer reads the cover letter and is not absolutely bored by the time they read the first or second sentence. But then it comes to the other issue, and this is why most candidates also don't want to write the cover letter. The manager may not want to read a bunch of boring cover letters, but the candidate's also like, look, I did a ton of writing in college. I just want to get my work done. I don't want to have to write an essay, right? Isn't that what it feels like? That's what it feels like to many of the folks that I work with. So here's the thing with the cover letters. It shouldn't be an essay. When you think of an essay, you think about writing in third person. You think about, you know, something formal and it's got to be super accurate. And of course, it's got to have good grammar and be accurate and whatnot. But the point that I'm trying to make is that a cover letter 
is your opportunity to be a little bit less formal. It's your opportunity to have a conversation and express your brand to the manager, the recruiter, whoever's making the decision, whether or not to move you into the interview. If you use that cover letter opportunity the way that it should be used, then you are really one of the very few, if not the only candidate in that pool that is going to actually be seen as the professional they are before the interview. When you get to the interview, there might be five or 10 people and the committee's gonna speak to all five or 10. They're gonna be there in person. If they're good at interviewing, they can express their brand and express their, their talent. If they're not, that's a different story. Um, but 10, maybe more candidates are gonna get an opportunity to express themselves at the interview. But if you write a good, well-crafted cover letter, that grabs their attention first and foremost, that is customized to the company and helps them also feel seen and heard, that clearly depicts your strengths and your accomplishments in terms of the organization's needs and the job description, and that is concise, that basically says everything the manager needs to know in order to decide that he or she wants to call you into the interview, in as few words as possible, that's what you want to do with the cover letter. That's the goal. Okay, so so I'm going to go through each of the, the things that I talked about right now to help you craft a great cover letter that if and when it gets seen, it will not just get tossed to the side because yes, there are some managers and recruiters that maybe don't get a chance to look at the cover letter, but I mean, they spend six seconds on your resume. So what did we expect, right? These are folks who have a ton. I mean, talking 250 to 300 applications for competitive positions, sometimes more. And they've got to only interview 10 people. So no, some of our materials aren't going to get read. But if you have targeted materials, I promise you they will. So let's get down to it. What are we going to include in here? The first thing to make sure you include is that very first sentence. It's got to be captivating. It's got to be compelling. And what you can do in order to craft a captivating and compelling first sentence is to look at the mission statement, to check out some of the um, employees that are in a similar role to yours at that company to kind of get a feel for the vibe, the culture, get a feel for their values, really understand their mission statement and do their employees live out their mission statement, take a look at the role and description, really get a good handle of, you know, what this company is looking for, not just what they're asking for, because in the job description, it'll say what they're asking for. And that's in the form of the requirements. But if you look between the lines, if you look deeper at the job description, if uh, beyond the job description into the mission, the website, um, if they have any core values and any um, cues that the uh, employees and the other staff members are giving out on LinkedIn or anywhere else, then you're able to speak directly to that. And that is even more powerful than simply grabbing something from the job description and putting it into the cover letter. So that very first sentence uh, could say something, you know, it all depends on how informal the company is, but it could say something like conversation that has nothing to do with your career. It doesn't matter where you are at. Story changes everything. So if you're able to blend any of the story elements, then you're in better shape. Okay, so altogether, that first part of the cover letter, you want to let them know what position you're interested in, where you found the position, and why you're a good candidate, all in just a few sentences that are very, um, you know, attention grabbing. Other parts of the cover letter are going to include uh, the fact that it needs to be customized and personalized. And this is beyond just the first um you know, the first paragraph, what most career uh, candidates do is they will go in and change the name of the title and then change the name of the company and ta-da, they got themselves a new cover letter. Now, I encourage you to take it a step further and really mold the cover letter so that it really speaks to them specifically. Imagine that you are at the interview with them. You wouldn't say the exact same thing that you would say in a conversation with one person when you're speaking to someone totally different. You use a lot of the context cues from your conversation, from your interactions, from your relationship, from your prior experiences with that person 
to fill in the gaps and to provide an experience that lets them know you know them and you see them. And you want to do the same thing on your cover letter. So as you're writing your cover letter and you talk about in that second paragraph, more likely than not, you're explaining how your qualifications line up with what they are looking for in terms of their requirements and desirables. When you write that out, you want to speak in exactly their language while still being able to demonstrate your personality. So you want to use their terminology for all the key skills they're looking for so it kind of pops out at them and they don't have to, you know, decipher whether or not you are you are qualified. But at the same time, you can throw a little bit of um, informality, a little bit of your personality in there so long as it's still appropriate, of course. And then in that third paragraph, so first paragraph is kind of entry, grabbing their attention and making sure that they know what position you're applying to, where you found the position and, and you know why you're qualified. Second paragraph is a number of different accomplishments that speak directly to the requirements and desirables of the position. And the third paragraph should be a paragraph that for every single company is slightly different. And this is a paragraph where you align yourself with the organization in terms of values, in terms of mission, in terms of purpose, just making sure that they understand that you are one of them. This is not necessarily to say that you have to change yourself. If done well, you actually are applying to positions that already align who you are. So you have no change to do. This is really more of expressing to them why it is that you are naturally driven towards this company towards this position? What is it about the position that really calls your name? Why is it that you feel that you would love to be in this position? Why are you excited to move forward with this company? And all of this, everything I'm sharing with you is really hinging on the fact that my philosophy on career development and career search and career change is the fact that you should never just go for a position because it's open. You should be someone who is loving your job, but it's time to take the next step. And so before you ever have a need for a job, you're actually out there searching to find the next best step, the next right step, the next natural step, as opposed to finding yourself where you unfortunately don't have a position and you don't have the luxury of being selective. Now, it's a totally different story if you are If you've been laid off, I know there's been a ton of folks that are laid off. And here's one thing I can tell you is that throwing generic cover letters at the online abyss usually takes much longer than targeting companies. So even if you're in that situation where you've been laid off and by the way, like my prayers go out to you because I know how stressful that can be. Um, But I just encourage you to consider right? Like in faith, consider that having a more direct and targeted relationship with the company via targeting your resume, via networking, um, you know, you're targeting your cover letter, like really honing in on the company, even though it takes longer. And yes, you'll be applying for less companies. It is going to give you a result much faster. Anyways, all that to say that you want to be applying at companies that you actually are aligned with. And so this third paragraph should be relatively easy to write if you've done that back work. Okay, so we've got that third paragraph. The fourth paragraph is pretty simple. The fourth paragraph is basically, again, I would love to talk with y'all over an interview and see if the feeling is mutual. Go ahead and contact me and here's my contact information. Now that's the very simple way of putting it, but of course you're going to write it out a little bit more formally and you're also going to include a couple of key skills, the core accomplishments summarized so that they know you're a good candidate. You're basically reminding them of why they need to make this call right now. Okay, now We've got the the basic concepts of the cover letter, but here's the thing. So many times I see cover letters that are two pages. If you have a cover letter that is two pages, I love you. And I appreciate the time that you've spent to write this beautiful essay of a cover letter. But my friend, you have got to bring that down to one page. You have to, like you have to. And to be honest with you, the most effective cover letters that I have seen have been about a half a page at max uh, three quarters of a page. This is because your cover letter is a method of communication. And a lot of times we think that communication comes only in words. And yes, 
Of course, you're communicating in words, but you're also communicating in thought. How much thought did you put into this cover letter? There's a famous quote, and it's by Marcus. Oh, let me get the name right here. Uh, The famous quote is by Marcus Tullius Cicero, Cicero, and the quote is that if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. It actually doesn't take very long to spill your guts and write this really long letter. It takes much more time to simplify what you've said, to say the same thing in a smaller number of words, and to have the most impactful words. That editing process of deciding what is most impactful in your cover letter is the most important part of the entire cover letter writing process. Hey, so I know you're halfway through the episode, but I am curious, has this podcast helped or encouraged you in any way? Well, if it has, a free, fast, and really easy way to support me and the Uncommon Career Podcast is to rate and review. You can even do this right now as you're listening. Just head to the Uncommon Career Podcast show page, scroll down, And below the list of episodes, you can tap the five-star rating and leave a review. Let me and others know which episode or topic impacted you the most because it means the world to me to hear from you and it helps others to see that the work is making an impact. Rate and review today and help me move the message forward. I'm going to repeat that. You're going to write your cover letter and that's important. You're going to include all the concepts that we talked about and that's important. But the most important part of writing your cover letter is the editing process where you bring your cover letter from two pages down to a half page or three quarters of a page. And this is difficult. Editing yourself is really hard because from your perspective, all your experience is important and everything you have to say is important. And I agree with you and I would love to hear, you know, all of your experience and what you've done and how that has made an impact on people. But unfortunately, this manager and this recruiter have 250 other folks to review. They have 250 other resumes and cover letters to look at. So by you submitting, doing the work on your end and submitting the smallest possible cover letter with the biggest possible impact is going to let the manager know and it's going to communicate that you have put in more forethought and that is going to communicate to the manager, I value your time and therefore I'm going to do my job well so you can do your job faster. And that is a breath of fresh air. So if you're able to get a cover letter that is A, including all the content that we talked about, B, customized and personalized to that specific company, help them to be seen, C, clearly aligning your strengths and your accomplishments with their organization's needs in their terms based off the job description, and D, concise with enough information to help them make a decision but no extra information. You really want to move forward only what they need in order to make a decision. This is similar to the emails that you see that just have a ton of text. And after reading the entire email, you realize it could have been said in two sentences or the meeting that lasted two and a half hours. And at the end of that meeting, you realized, you know, if we had planned this better, this could have been an email. That's what I'm talking about. So if you show that type of forethought and planning to the manager just by showing a good cover letter, they're already going to imagine how you would be saving time and being more efficient and more effective and more strategic when you're on the job. All right, so I have spent plenty of time now kind of reiterating some of the things to think about when you are creating your cover letter. Now, a lot of times when we start to write, we get this like mental block of like, what exactly should I say or how should I say it? And this is where I want to encourage you to remember that you're human and the person on the other side who's reading that letter is also human. Just talk to them like if you were at a job fair, talk to them as if they said, hey, come grab coffee with me. I want to, you know, learn about your professional experience and see if you're a good fit for the position. That's really the type of conversation you want to have in a cover letter. Create curiosity about what you know and what experience you have. And so you might, you know, have a statement in your cover letter that shares about this great project you did and give just enough information that they are really intrigued. 
Maybe you created a program and you brought the program from funding of $0 to $1 million in six months and you are so excited to share how you did that. Include that in your cover letter because now the manager is going to want to know how exactly did you raise that amount of money? How did you increase your budget, right? And remember that the accomplishments you share, the curiosity you want to cultivate is about your abilities as they relate to the position. Because a lot of times we want to put a lot of great accomplishments that we have, but they're not really directly connected to the position that that manager is hiring for. And remember that while that manager might want to hear everything about your experience, they really only have time to connect to one or two items. All right. So other than that, I think the most important thing to remember is that writing is a process. When you write your cover letter, it's not something that we sit down and in five minutes we're done. I would encourage you to do it in phases. So the first phase is sort of the outline phase where all you're doing is you're writing down paragraph one. Here's the name of the position. Here's why I'm qualified for it in 10 to 15 words. Here's the source of the position, so you can include that in there. And of course, here's the name of the company. Paragraph two, here's the three key accomplishments that I'm going to share. And take time to really figure out which three key accomplishments you want to share. And if I were you, I would encourage you to do what I call a highlight reel, which is to figure out broad statements that encapsulate multiple positions, not just one. Because if you get your most, you know, impactful accomplishment from one position, really what you're doing is restating what's on the resume. And that's another sign that it's a copy paste or it's just not as intriguing because they just read it on the resume. So the best thing to do, and and I've got videos on this in the Academy, I could probably do an episode um, a little bit in the future on this, but basically what you do is you take multiple positions that you've had that are similar and then you create cumulative accomplishments. So if when one job you raised a certain amount of money, let's just go with $10 just for the sake of simplicity, um, which of course you didn't raise $10, let's say 10 million. Um, And then another job you raised 5 million and then the last job you raised another 5 million. Altogether, you've raised 20 million. Those are the types of cumulative statements that you're looking for in your cover letter so that you don't repeat what you have already put into your cover letter. Um, so anyways, the the first phase of the process is to outline what you need in paragraph one, what you need in paragraph two, and what you need in paragraph three, which of course paragraph three is why you align with their mission, why you align with their values and whatnot. And then, you know, the final paragraph is pretty easy. It's just, here's why I'm still interested. Here's a reminder of why I'm so great and perfect for this position. I would love to talk to you to see if the feeling is mutual. Um, so spend a little bit of time outlining, no pressure there. Then step away from it, step away from it, come back with fresh eyes the next day or in an hour after dinner, whatever it is, and then you start writing one paragraph at a time. Now, I'm saying that it should only be four paragraphs, but you can split it up. There's so many different ways of doing this, but just know that that's the general flow of the cover letter. Um, So you have phase one is outlining. Phase two is writing each of the uh, paragraphs. Phase three is reading it ruthlessly, reading it as if you were a manager and you had no more than two minutes absolute max to get through this. Imagine you're a teacher, grab yourself a red pen and say, this is not relevant. This is not relevant. This is relevant, but not quite as impactful nor as important as this other sentence. And when you get to Just having, you know, a half a page to three quarters of a page in Times New Roman, single space font, you're right around where a good cover letter um, length might be. Now, I can't speak for the content, right? Um, I encourage you to reach out to myself or another career coach to really get the content down and, you know, make sure that it reflects your brand, that it reflects their mission and their vision, um, all that good stuff. So outline, write, then ruthlessly edit, and then you do a revision phase. This is where you get all of the easy, quick, typo type of situation. You do a cleanup of everything, then you step away one more time, you come back, and you read it as if you had not written it, as if it's someone else who wrote it. 
You don't want it to be too familiar because if it feels too familiar to you, you're actually going to skip over a lot of what you wrote because you remember it. So you're just going to be like, yep, that's right. But errors can be hidden in there. So read it as if it's not your cover letter. And then once you're done, PDF that baby and send it out. And so that's how you take care of a cover letter. I really hope that this has been helpful for you and that you've got a couple of tips. I know a cover letter can sound really simple, and it is. It is, but if you stick with the simple way of doing a cover letter, chances are it isn't going to get read because as soon as I see that first sentence, that's about the last sentence that I read on that cover letter because I figure, oh, yep, this is one of those cover letters where everything in the cover letter is basically in the resume. There's no new information, so I'm good to go. But if I'm able to see just a tiny smidge of creativity, then I know that there might be something worth reading in the cover letter. All right, my friends, I'm going to leave you with that. I hope this has been helpful. Know that if you're out there and you've been laid off or you're just searching for a new career, know that I'm praying for you, that I love you, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening. You came to the right place if you're seeking career direction, are ready to launch your career, if you're looking to change positions, or you want to secure the best offer for your next role. And I've created some resources just for you to help you along the way. First, hear his voice with the five steps to God's will for your career. Second, organize your career search. I've got a career transition checklist with seven career phases and over 30 bite-sized strategies for you to check off along the way. Or grab the Bible-based mindset fix. It's a collection of scripture to help you apply truth to negative thoughts so that you can get unstuck and go after your position. Finally, if you have a question that hasn't been answered, then send it in. Email me your question and not only will I answer it, but I'll also give you a shout out on the episode as well. Again, thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next one.